Yvette Donosodias is an example of, uh, among many, of students who exceed the achievements of their professor or professors. Uh, I knew Yvette, and I perhaps will give this personal uh, aspect more than the formal. As a, an undergraduate student in her first semester, first year here at, at Brigham Young University, she came from Miami, but having lived in Los Angeles as well, both of those cities. And she was lost at BYU. Can you imagine? No, maybe I shouldn't say that. But she was a convert to the church and uh, in the process found that there were so many white faces at BYU that seemed rather strange after having lived in, in Miami and, and Los Angeles and was amazed at all the blonde hair and the bald hair and the lack of it in, in other cases as well. <clears throat> Uh, I, I don't want to go on too much farther from, with that. I, Yvette uh, was known to, at those days just as Yvette Donoso, but now marriage and with the mother of three children, she serves uh, as the executive director of community arts in the Utah governor's office. She's the first Hispanic uh, woman to hold a cabinet position in the Utah governor's office here. We're proud of her for that. She completed a degree here at Brigham Young University in, with an, in honors, and that was where I had a chance to teach her in anthropology. And then in 1999, completed her degree here in the law school. Uh, so she has those advanced degrees and has been working here since 1999 in the state government and in the various other councils. She served as president of the Utah Minority Bar Association and as chair of the governor's Hispanic Advisory Council. She's achieved much more than her professor. I guess I want to end on one personal note in this introduction. Yvette was a student who was the proper blend of aggressiveness <clears throat> and, um, and humility. She came to my office and demanded excellence. And if we didn't make something clear in class, she came and let us know that. That's good. I like that thing. But the fact that she, she was at the same time willing to receive instruction uh, was just one of those unique qualities that professors generally like in students, the, the proper blend of aggressive and, and humility. I hope that's the uh, proper representation. Uh, Yvette, you're right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. I, I don't ever think that as students you ever you know, reach your teachers and masters. And I definitely want to say that I couldn't have survived those, those first couple of years at BYU without Professor um, Lyon. And I know Professor England is hiding back there, too. But I very much consider them mentors. And of course, going on to law school was so great to have Professor Dominguez and Echo Hawk and, and uh, Marguerite, Professor Dreesen there as well. Um, today, more than anything, I really wanted to have a really good discussion with you. Um, Everything's game. I am willing to talk about anything as long as hopefully I can discuss it with you. I wanted to maybe start off by giving you maybe some interest in demographics uh, regarding ethnicity in Utah and let you know of some of the things that the Huntsman administration, I think, is doing very much to uh, in recognition of ethnicity as an asset for the state on various fronts, not just economic development, but also in something that, of course, that's especially important to my department, which is cultural exchanges and so forth. And then um, once I kind of give you kind of teaser uh, topics of things that might be of interest, I really want to open it up to you and, and let you ask questions and let you participate in the discussion. I want to learn from this as well. So hopefully that will be appealing. Um, I think um, most people, I, uh, I think growing up, maybe and even outside of Utah, think of Utah as a very homogeneous state. I think when people think of Utah, they, they definitely don't think about ethnic diversity. However, that has been changing quite a bit, especially in the last decade or so. Um, from 1990 to 2000, um, the ethnic minority population of the state of Utah grew at about a rate of 117 percent compared to the white Caucasian population growth of 21 percent. At least, And these are all figures taken from the census. Um, during that time, foreign-born population grew at a 170 uh, percent rate as well. Um, and it is estimated that by this year, according to the census, um, the five major ethnic groups, and by that I mean a Hispanic Latino, American Indian, African American, Pacific Islanders, and Asian Americans are projected to become about 16 percent 
of the state's population. In some areas, like in Salt Lake, um, that percent is it's as high as 20 percent. In some areas, like Ogden, it's as high as 30 percent. Um, and there's some areas, of course, that are um, experiencing exponential growth, even in areas like Washington County, which are considered rural areas. Um, in response to this fast-growing um, ethnic community, um, the Huntsman administration thought that it was very important to elevate the role of the um, offices of ethnic affairs. Previously, um, and these exist by executive order, not by statute, we have an office of Hispanic affairs, of Asian affairs, of Pacific Islander affairs, and of black affairs. And these functioned independent of each other. Um, in a lot of ways, um, even though we are um, a Western state, we're, we're much more ahead than other states. Other states, uh, at least in conferences that have attended, usually only have like maybe a Hispanic commission or so, so forth. But here in our state, we have had these um, ethnic offices in place since the early 70s, since 1972, during um, Governor Bangader's administration. So I think that um, it shows that Utah has been progressive even before this administration and thinking ahead and making sure that all of Utah citizens, including its ethnic communities, um, were feeling like their needs were being served. What has happened in the last 10 months since the Governor Huntsman came into our office is he created my department. It didn't exist prior to that. Um, there used to be a department known as the Department of Community and Economic Development, which was now split, and it, he now created the Governor's Office of Economic Development in my department, the Department of Community and Culture. And under that department, I have six divisions. Um, I have the Division of Indian Affairs, the Office of Ethnic Affairs, and then other really fun divisions like housing and library and history and, and arts. But um, what we what we saw as a very dire need right now for Utah was um, that a lot of the issues impacting our ethnic communities um, cut across the board as far as um, educational gaps, need for economic development, um, lack of health insurance, and so forth. Um, and rather than duplicating efforts as separate offices, the governor created what is now known as the Office of Ethnic Affairs. So it's its, its own division um, within my department. And even though each of the major ethnic groups still have their own director and their own ethnic councils, um, it's now all managed and administered under one um, director. Um, and they have one strategic plan in place, which works really well. And basically the mission of the Office of Ethnic Affairs is to work with fellow sister agencies to ensure that all of state government is adequately meeting the needs of Utah's ethnic populations. And um, across the nation, we're, vi we're viewed as a very progressive state. We are tech right now one of the few states that have incorporated this model. Um, and in fact, um, the d directors of that office will be going to a conference soon in Kentucky in, in the next month because people want to know how Utah is handling its, its ethnic growth in the sense that we do have such a rapid influx of immigration into our state. Um, and I wanted to speak a little bit about some of the challenges that that growth has has brought about. I'm sure that you guys, um, especially now with the visit of Embajador de Icaza, have read about some of our um, friends in, in anti-immigrant groups like UFIRE who said that they're going to protest you know, in the capital, the fact that Governor Huntsman is going to be meeting with Embajador, Ambassador de Icaza. Um, there's definitely some sentiment in Utah that maybe hadn't been felt before. We're, we're now, because we are experiencing such a rapid um, immigration influx, there are groups who feel threatened. And some of the challenges that they raise are, for example, in education. There's no doubt that we now have um, schools in our school districts that have you know, 60% ethnic minority populations. We have some um, school districts where they have up to 98 languages that are spoken. And with that, of course, it makes the whole notion of English as a second language instruction challenging for some of our teachers. A lot of our teachers, um, I don't know if you knew, but in the next five years, it's estimated that about 60% of our teachers are going to be retiring. Um, and that raises a lot of questions. One, what are we doing to recruit 
teachers um, of color and others who are culturally competent and, and who have the sensitivity to, to teach some, you know, some of these new children who are entering our school system? And do we have enough development training grants to make sure that our teachers are adequately trained in those areas? Are we recruiting, retraining, and promoting you know, teachers and administrators of color at, a, at enough fast rate so that we can not only put out the fires but proactively start coming up with, with good models that are based on sound best practices. Um, there's the issue, of course, of, of health care. Under the law, um, you have to be a resident for five years before you can qualify for just about any um, assistance, you know, grants and so forth, but except for emergency Medicaid, so as far as um, if someone's in a tragic accident or, you know, the birth, you know, giving birth and so forth. And so that brings about cost to our hospitals and so forth. And, and of course, there's the whole notion of, you know, criminal law enforcement. And as you know, um, this last legislative session, um, we have a new law in the state of Utah now where we have basically a two-tier driver's license system. Um, we are one of 10 states that actually allows undocumented um, immigrants to have a driver's license. In that sense, we, we are very progressive. Um, um, and, but, of course, we now have the Real ID Act that has come into place, too, and we need to make sure that we're in compliance in the next three years so that we don't lose, you know, federal funding. So as a state, I think we're trying to be very creative to balance the immigration growth with issues that are very pertinent to the state, such as, you know, how do state agencies reach out their services? How do we be best use our funding? How do we be best keep public safety issues and so forth in check? Um, going back a little bit to some of the education issues, um, in recognition of some of the growing challenges that um, as a state and as a nation we are having um, to ensure that um, some of our ethnic um, students have equal access to opportunities. Um, 